Hello, everybody. My name is Alexis. I'm an entrepreneur, speaker, and author of the book A Journey into Truth Unveiling Life's Secrets for Truth Seekers. And you are watching the Vibrate to Create YouTube channel. And on this channel, I talk about life, philosophy, meaning, art, spirituality, metaphysics, and so much more. If you're interested in topics like these, then click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified of when I post new videos so you never miss a video. Thank you for being a part of my journey. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Who? There's, um... There's an artist. Okay, so I saw this in person, and it's called the Sagrada Familia. And let's see. Barcelona is a city characterized by regimental city blocks and wide linear streets, a departure from the narrow winding streets of most European cities. Yet, nestled in these rigid streets are some of the most unique and beautiful buildings ever created each rooted in nature through structural forms and designs. These beautiful structures stand out among their neighbours and are the work of one of the world's greatest architects, Antony Gaudí. His buildings were not just inspired by nature, they were a celebration of nature, a celebration of life and a celebration of the god Gaudí devoted his life to. Casa Mila, Casa Balio, and perhaps most famously the yet to be finished Sagrada Familia. All are within a short walk of each other, and each is defined by their complex curves that defied all conventional architectural rules. These buildings were born from the mind of Antony Gaudí, born in 1852 to a family of craftsmen. Antony Gaudí found much of his inspiration and meaning in architecture by following the patterns of nature, using the beauty that he saw as a gift from God as the ultimate blueprint to the world. Gaudi himself once said, originality consists of going back to the origins, and that he did. These complex intertwining parabolic forms, created in a time before computers existed, are so complex that his magnum opus, the Sagrada Familia, a building which began construction over 135 years ago, is still under construction. Today, we are going to learn its story and why it has taken generations to complete. Sagrada Familia began construction in 1882 under the guidance of architect Francisco de Paula Villiers, who resigned a year later, allowing Gaudí to take over at the age of 30. Even at this young age, Gaudí saw his opportunity and set out to make the project his masterpiece, transforming the project and incorporating his signature style combining Gothic and Art Nouvelle architecture to create something completely new. Sangrada Familia looks like the work of evolution, rather than design, like a giant elaborate termite mound whose blueprint was carved from the laws of nature. Gaudi was not just a master architect. Designing buildings in creative and innovative ways is the challenge of an artist. He was a master engineer. He understood how these shapes impacted the structural integrity of the building and allowed physics and nature to dictate his designs. Rather than fight against the laws of nature, he worked with them. He bridged art and science like no man before him. He understood that nature is defined by the laws of mathematics and to him this was the ultimate celebration of God. Columns mimicking trees and skeletons, arches mirroring rib cages, seashell inspired spiral stairways, spires emulating crystals, and ceilings that rival forest canopies for natural beauty. Their designs are all rooted in natural phenomenon, but for a human mind to recreate them in stone took a man with true genius. So how on earth did Antony Gaudi design something so complex in an era when computational analysis did not exist? Evolution has happened upon these complicated structures through trial and error. Natural arches are the work of chance, the weak simply fall before we can witness them, while plants developed cells capable of sensing the direction of gravity to influence their growth patterns, and bone cells are stimulated to grow and multiply when placed under stress. 
Nature is the ultimate form of intelligent design, and Gaudi pursued a simple concept to guide his replication of these designs. And the reason I wanted to talk about Anthony Gaudi is an artist, and I've talked about it before in other videos. An artist creates for the sake of creating. Like, let me see if I can find the right words here. I think it's actually in the book. So it says, a painter creates paintings. This is on page 86 in the eternal, the eternal Process of Evolvement chapter. So it says, a painter creates paintings for the creating part and will not stop after just one painting. That is because he enjoys the process of making it, how he wants it for the fun of creating. He doesn't do it to say, this is it. This is the only one I'll paint for the rest of my life because it's just right. Once a flower has undergone its process toward blooming, there is no regression possible. It cannot reverse itself back into a seedling. This is the natural process of evolution and growth. There is no standing still. There is no looking back. The rose, do not, the rose does not look at its old leaves and say, wait just a minute, I think I'll redo that. It keeps growing for the joy of creation. There is no pause, rewind, or fast forward. There is simply now, and this isn't in here, but it's now, and the joy of creating the new now, and the joy of transformation, and the joy of bringing something into creation that was not there before. Like that is, to me, that is what a goal or a dream is. It's Bringing something into creation that has not ever been before in the same way that you're going to be creating it. And that's what these artists are tapping into. It's that creative power of wherever we come from. Some people believe in God. Some people believe in the universe. Whatever you want to call it, the nature of us and whatever we spring from, spring forth from of nature. I feel like that's what artists are really tapping into is that creative nature and everybody is in some form because you are creating your life and creating who you're becoming. Your body is continually growing and evolving. And, there, you know, some people have children. And so it's life creating itself forward. It's creative power, creative flow. And so for me, when I look at Anthony Gaudi and it's like he just kept creating throughout his life. I don't know too much about him or his life or what exactly he did but I did see the Sagrada Familia in person I was like I remember looking up at it and I was like oh my gosh I didn't get to go inside because I had to get to my um my cruise ship at that time it was quite a while ago a couple years ago but I remember looking up at it and being like wow oh my gosh I can't believe one person came up with this blueprint and that is part of the creation. That's part of the laying those sticks down, laying those bricks down, laying down the foundation of what could become one day for many other people to enjoy, like the book. Laying down the foundation, laying down every single tiny little word, and then finding the ways to make it all into a specific book, and then finding the ways to get it online for people to buy, you know, like all these tiny little steps that it takes. And to me, that is a really big part of living a fulfilled life is creation, creativity, thinking of new ideas, evolving eternally into something brand new and deciding I'm going to take this path in life and then just taking those tiny little steps to make it happen. And so I guess that's the big point of this movie. It's about a woman who takes tiny little steps to create the home that is to her liking. It's like an artist creating their specific, their specific thing that they would love to be surrounded by. And, and not only that, but the, the movie also kind of goes over the breakdown and how sometimes that darkness or that thing that looks so bad in the moment is actually what is leading you into something that's going to be so good for you and sometimes and also we don't grow unless we are put in an uncomfortable position and 
because why would you want to grow or change something if you're completely comfortable and happy where you are? Sometimes it's almost like as if life is like push you right into some uncomfortable situations so that you'll finally decide to change something or to grow into something better or to take a new path in life. I think in the grand scheme of things, if you really just look at life in a very different way, you see the miracle and you see how incredible it is. It's a really good movie. I would watch it if I were you. When I'm looking at the commercial, commercial, is it a commercial? Like the trailer. When I look at the trailer there, it's like, ah, you can tell this is such an old movie. Just by the way that it's filmed, you can kind of tell it's a little bit old. But I remember really loving that movie and like loving to watch the process of evolvement and the process of someone who's like so on their low and then get to rise into something even more beautiful than what she was before she went through that darkness. It's a really good movie. So I love that movie. And I don't know if I have anything more to say here, um, but I'm going to get to my next video and see what comes up in that video. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.